Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at images of an infant who presented to emergency department with seizure. Patient had no medical history. So as part of the examination, clinical team decided to proceed with quick MRI brain examination. On quick MRI brain examination, we do limited three plane haste sequences in sagittal, coronal and axial planes with diffusion weighted sequences, the idea being on this quick MRI brain examination, we can assess for any hydrocephalus, mass, mass effect, midline shift or infarction. So let's look at the quick MRI brain images. So on the axial T2 haste sequences, we can see multiple hypo-intense nodules in the subependymal regions. There is also suggestion of cortical, subcortical hypo-intense foci bilaterally. On the coronal haste sequences, we can see similar findings. We can see subependymal T2 hypointense nodules. There is suggestion of hypointense fossa in the subcortical regions in bilateral cerebral hemisphere. So the clinical team proceeded to go ahead and order a complete MRI brain examination under moderate sedation. Let's look at the complete MRI brain images. On the T1 axial images, we can see multiple hyperintense fossa in bilateral cerebral hemispheres in the white matter regions also in the cortical and subcortical regions bilaterally. You can also see some T1 hyperintense lesions which are radiating from the subependymal regions to the cortex of the brain. Another radial hyperintense lesion extending from the subependymal region to the subcortical regions. We can see multiple T1 hyperintense subependymal nodules also in the region of bilateral foramen of Monroe. Again, you can see multiple white matter high signal lesions and multiple radial bands extending from the cortex to the subependymal region. On the T2 sequences, we can see similar findings. These lesions are now T2 hypointense. We can see T2 hypointense lesions in the subcortical regions, subependymal T2 hypointense lesion. We can see radial T2 hypointense lesions extending from the subependymal region to the cortex multiple additional T2 hypointense lesions in the white matter. As part of workup, patient also underwent echocardiogram examination. On the echocardiogram, we can see hyperechoic lesion along the lateral wall of left atrium. We can see additional hyperechoic lesion in the left ventricle apical region. So we are dealing with an infant who has multiple subependymal T1 hyperintense and T2 hypointense lesions, additional lesions in the white matter, additional radial bands extending from subependymal region to the subcortical regions. P patient also has hyperechoic lesions in the left atrium and left ventricle. On the clinical exam, they found chagrin patch on the shoulder and hypomelanotic lesions on the abdomen and lower leg. Imaging appearances are consistent with tuberous sclerosis. So this is a sentinel paper in which they assess the MRI appearances of tuberous sclerosis in neonates and young infants published by Dr. Borkovic. So in this research, they found that the nodular subependymal lesions and the linear bands or hyper intense on T1 weighted sequences and hypo intense of T2 weighted sequences, which is reverse of what we would see in adult tuberous sclerosis patients. In fact, the unmyelinated brain helps us to identify these lesions much better in neonates. So MRI is a very good examination if there's clinical concern for tuberous sclerosis. Conversely, pure intracortical tubers may be difficult to identify, although we were able to see on our patient. So these are some of the representative images from the article. They are demonstrating T1 hyperintense subependymal nodules. They are demonstrating the radial bands cortical subcortical tubers. In their research, they also found subependymal Jane cell astrocytoma in one of their patients. Uh, so this is a recent update on tuberous sclerosis published in Radiographics in 2021. So these are some of the findings which we can see in tuberous sclerosis, such as cortical tubers, white matter heterotrophia, subependymal Jane cell astrocytoma, subependymal nodules. Outside the CNS, we can also find cardiac rhabdomyomas, renal angiomyolipomas, lymphangiomatosis, 
and pulmonary MMPH. So these are the imaging findings of tuberous sclerosis in various organs. In terms of diagnosis, we need two major features or one major feature and two or more minor features. Our patient had hypomelanotic macule, chagrin patches, cortical dysplasia, subependymal nodules and cardiac rhabdomyomas. I hope you found this case to be informative. Thanks for your attention.